Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the August 26, 2009 uh, public hearing of the Board of Architecture Review and appreci appreciate everyone in attendance here this evening. The board was established by zoning ordinance in 1958. Our first historic district was Gratz Park and we now have a total of 14 historic districts throughout the county. The board, which is appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the Urban County Council, is a uh, part of the Division of the Histo uh, Division of Historic Preservation. The Historic Preservation Office maintains a full-time staff to assist you with your projects. The board encourages and recommends that all applicants use them as a resource. The Preservation Office is located at 101 East Vine Street in room 220. It is our procedure to consider applications in the order in which they are listed on our, uh, on our agenda. I uh, will attempt to sound each case, uh, but if there are any questions regarding the case from the applicant, uh, the board members, or anyone in the audience, we'll have a presentation by the staff and hear any additional comments from the applicant. The board will then ask questions or make comments regarding the application and then hear any comments from other interested parties. The chair will then ask the board members to enter a motion. If you would like to address the board this evening, I'd ask that you please come to the microphone and state your name and address for the public record. I'd also ask that you please write your name on the sign-in sheet by the door so that all the information may be recorded correctly. Uh, before we get into the um, uh, staff approvals and the certificate of appropriateness applications this evening, we need to do a, a little bit of um, housekeeping for the board. Um, a couple of meetings ago, pointed a, uh, a nominating committee to come up with officers for this next uh, this next term, and I was wondering if the nominating committee might have a, a report for us. Yes, we do. The nominating committee would like to uh, nominate uh, our existing officers to maintain their position, which is Derek Wingfield as our board chair and Nathan Billings as our board vice chair. Uh, it, might that be a motion? That would be a motion. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Sumner. Thank you. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second. Thank you. Mr. Hosfield, any discussion of the motion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 I, for the sake of letting the motion go forward there, uh, thank you uh, all very much for your, for your work on that. Um, before we uh, get into the Certificate of Appropriateness applications, I need to note the following staff approvals. Uh, there are many items that the staff can approve, eliminating the necessity for most applicants to appear before the board. This evening, there are a total of 15 approved applications, and I'll need to read those uh, quickly into the record. In the South Ashland uh, Central Avenue Historic District at 259 South Ashland Avenue, replace tree and bulkhead. Uh, in the Aylesford Historic District at 328 Clay Avenue, renovate front porch, and at 8 Preston Avenue, remove deteriorated trees. Uh, there are three in the Belcourt Historic District at 154 Forest Avenue, renovate front porch. At 160 East Belcourt, replace wire fencing. And at 545 Sayre Avenue, rebuild brick chimneys and saw guard rail and repair porch roof. In the north side of uh, Historic District, there are six ap uh, applications that have uh, been approved by the staff. At 470 North Broadway, replace decking and stairs. At 559 North Broadway, replace storms and repair, uh, storm doors and repair, or storm windows and repair windows. At uh, 320 Hampton Court, install handrail. 331 West 2nd Street, renovate structure. 470 West 6th Street, replace roof and install chimney caps. And at 493 West 3rd Street, replace roof. In the uh, South Hill Historic District, the final three staff approvals are at 257 South Limestone, install storm windows and repair windows. 120 West Maxwell Street, repair stained glass window. And uh, finally, at 350 South Upper Street, renovate structure. I will now proceed with the review of applications for certificates of appropriateness. Uh, the first case this evening is in the Northside Historic District at 431 West 6th Street. The scope of the work is to construct a rear canopy. Is that applicant present? Would you like to come forward, ma'am, and give us your name and address, please? Deborah Danner, 431 West 6th Street. Thank you very much. Uh, have you had an opportunity to read the staff's uh, findings and recommendation? Yes, I have. Uh, the recommending approval is submitted uh, with the one condition that all exposed would be painted. Yes, we had planned on doing that. Are, are you comfortable with, with yes. that? Yes. Excellent. Let's see if anyone on the board has any comments or questions for you. Anyone? Would anyone in the audience like to speak to this case this evening? Okay, I don't see anyone. I uh, would certainly entertain a motion on this case, please. 
Mr. Chair, in regard to case number 1731431-A, 431 West 6th Street, I move that the certificate be approved with the staff uh, recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Hossfield. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Thank you, Mr. Billings. Any discussion of the motion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay, the next case this evening is in the Constitution Street Historic District at 194 North Limestone. The scope of the work is to construct a planter wall. Is that applicant present? No, he's not, but he did receive the staff report. And I talked to him today, and he's in agreement. Thank you, Mr. Ginocchio. Uh, staff has recommended approval is submitted. Uh, does anyone on the board have any comments or questions regarding this case? Is anyone in the audience here to speak to this case this evening? I don't see anyone. Uh, would certainly entertain a motion on this case, please. Mr. Chairman, with respect to case number 11660194-0 at 194 North Limestone, I move that the application be approved as submitted. Thank you, Mr. Billings. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second the motion. Thank you, Ms. Sumner. Any discussion of the motion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> okay, the next case is in um, the Belcourt Historic District at 200 East Belcourt. The scope of the work is to construct masonry walls. Is that applicant present? Sir, so if you'd like to come forward, please, and give us your name and address. My name is Michael Bassetti, 200 East Belcourt. Sir, thank you very much. Um, staff has recommended, have you had, had an opportunity to read the staff's findings and recommendations? I have. I've read the staff's findings and talked to Ms. Anderson. The, um, the staff's recommending approval of the replacement of the retaining wall along the driveway uh, and the creation of the planting bed, brick pillars, and gate with two conditions that the final gate details come back to staff and any change. Changes come back to staff, and staff is recommending denial of the pillars and uh, cheek retaining walls. Are you comfortable with the staffs? Well, the only thing I want to make clear is we, we withdrew the request to build the cheek walls and the retaining walls okay. and only want to be considered for the driveway retaining walls. Excellent. To clarify, what you withdrew, did that also include the front pillars, or is that still something you're pursuing? No, front pillars, cheek walls, retaining walls, okay. withdrawn. Thank you. Excellent. Let's see if anyone. In, in, in light of the, uh, and we'd gotten, um, Amelia had sent us an email. She's okay. away. But she had sent an email about your withdrawal uh, request. And so in light of that withdrawal, obviously it means that the balance of what's applied for is reflected as what the staff is in a position within the guidelines to recommend approval for. Thank you for the clarification, Ms. Kerr. Uh, let's see if anyone on the board has any comments or questions for you, sir. Anyone? Well, since most of my comments and questions revolved around the cheek wall, so I think no more questions Excellent. from me. Hmm? Let's see if anyone in the audience is here to speak to this case this evening. I don't see anyone getting up. And I would be much obliged to someone if they would be willing to make a motion regarding this case. I'd be happy to. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, regarding case number 1530200-B at 200 East Bell Court, I would recommend approval. Uh, of the uh, submittal with the staff recommendations, noting that the request for the front pillars and cheek wall retaining walls has been withdrawn. Thank you, Ms. Sumner. Yes. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Thank you, Mr. Billings. Any discussion of the motion? I would just say that I'm sorry your contractor put you in the position in the first place that the staff had to stop you from doing work. Well, you know, it's been a learning experience. Uh, we certainly want to follow the rules, and uh, we'll be in a better position to do so. Um, next time thank you and thank you, thank you for, for coming down and going through the process you bet so all those in favor of the motion please signify by saying aye. Aye. aye 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 any opposed motion carries sir thank you very much thank you okay the next case this evening pardon me while i flip a couple of pages here 
is also in the Belcourt Historic District at 149 Forest Avenue. The scope of the work is to demolish a porch and deck, construct an addition, a sunken patio, and change an opening. Is that applicant present? Sir, if you'd like to come forward, please, and give us your name and address. Uh, Dave Hellard, 194 North Hanover Avenue. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, staff is recommending. Uh, have you had an opportunity to read, read the staff's yes. findings and recommendations? Uh, thank you. Uh, staff is recommending approval submitted with following conditions that the corner boards be uh, plain, four inch wide boards in lieu of the fluted, ten inch wide boards, that all final details. Um, noted in the findings, come uh, back to staff for review and approval prior to purchase of any of the said materials, and then if any other LFUCG agencies require change to any of the drawings, those items will need to be returned to staff for review. Are you comfortable with those? Uh, uh, yes. Recommendations? Yes. Excellent. Let's see if anyone on the board has any comments or questions for you, sir. Anyone? I have none. Would anyone in the audience like to speak to this case this evening? See anyone? And would, I would certainly entertain a motion regarding this case, please. Mr. Chairman, with respect to case number 0728149-D at 149 Forest Avenue, I would move that the board approve the application as submitted with the following staff recommended conditions that the corner boards be plain four inch wide boards in lieu of the fluted 10 inch wide boards. Two, that all details of those items noted in the findings of the staff report be submitted to staff for review and approval prior to the purchase of any of the materials. And three, should any of the other LFUCG divisions or departments require any change to the drawings, that those items be returned to staff for review. If there's any disagreement on those, you're welcome to come back to the board at that time. All right. Thank you. Mr. Billings, thank you. Is there a second to the motion? Well, second. second. Uh, thank you both. <laughs> um, any discussion to the motion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Sir, thank you very much. The next case this evening is in the Northside Historic District at 324 Hampton Court. Uh, the scope of the work is to change gutter design and repair soffit and fascia. Is that applicant present? Sir, if you'd please come forward and, and give us your name and address. Scott Callahan, 324 Hampton Court. Thank you very much, sir. Have you had an opportunity to read the staff's uh, findings and recommendations? Uh, actually, I have not. I've kind of been thrown in this process kind of late. My wife was handling everything, and she just rushed to the hospital. So, okay. So if you can bring me up to speed. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, perhaps it would be best for the staff to present the case so we're all on the same page, and we'll, uh, we'll have the staff, if you wouldn't mind, um, uh, taking your seat again for just a minute. We'll have the staff run through the, the information for us. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> This is the property at 324 Hampton Court. Uh, the request changed the gutter design, and repair of soffit and facial. Uh, the gutter design on this structure is a box gutter throughout the house. Except for a rear shed roof addition that was done uh, prior to uh, this area becoming getting the H1 overlay. Uh, the applicant is requesting the board grant the COA to change the gutter design of this historic structure from the existing box style to a hanging OG gutter. The existing box gutters would be roofed over and shingled. The existing crown mold would be removed from the fascia board and hanging gutters installed. Any deteriorated wood of the soffit and our fascia would be replaced with similar materials and design. On the application, the owner states, quote, we originally set out to reline and restore the current box gutters. 
but after several quotes, we realized this was not financially affordable. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Janaki, I might, might I interrupt you for just a second? Sure. Sir, I, if you, there's, there's quite a bit of time left in your application. If you'd rather postpone this to another date, uh, in light of your situation, we'd certainly be willing to entertain that. If, sure, if you, if you would, please. Yeah, after conversations with my wife, I'm, I'm familiar enough with, with, you know, what's been requested, just the formalities of what you refer to as, you know, staff reviews. I haven't reviewed anything, but I'm familiar enough with our conversations that, I, you know, I can proceed with, you know, any, you know, uh, decisions, recommendations you guys make. Oh, okay, okay. That's what, what, Thank you. When you say your wife's rushed to the hospital, we didn't know if maybe you wanted to go to the hospital and, <laughs> instead of be here. No, no, I, mean, yeah, I, I don't know the details choice. are. But. Yeah, but it was kind of like, yeah, I, I got to go. Can you be there? And so, okay, uh, okay. okay. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, uh, Mr. Jockey, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Um, if you would continue on, please, sir. We're just trying to be accommodating, so. Well, this was her quote then. <laughs> Is that what you were getting at? <laughs> I'll start that one over. We originally set out to reline and restore the current box gutters, but after several quotes, we realized that this was not financially affordable, especially given the current state of the real estate market in today's economy. We then considered replacing the gutters with a more current style and noticed a sizable price difference of over $20,000 to be exact. As property owners, we feel this is the most sensible decision financially and from a maintenance standpoint." End of quote. In the attachments, there were quotations from six roofing contractors, photographs of eight homes of, on the Hampton Court which have hanging gutters that the applicant states, and I quote, have already made the conversion, unquote, of four pho photographs of the applicant's 1915 structure showing soft conditions at various box gutter areas, and one photograph at the applicant's rear shed roof addition that has a hanging gutter. The addition was constructed prior to 1986 the date the north side was designated a historic district. I, we could show you those photographs, uh, Randy, of the, uh, the other, there were eight structures that were submitted of other houses in which the applicant thought that the uh, box gutters had been overshot. That's four of them. Thank you, Randy. So we've listed the guidelines for your reference. The findings, the proposal to overshoot those historic structures, box gutters, remove the crown mold and install OG hanging gutters is not in accordance with guidelines. Box gutters are an integral part of the architectural detail and features of this house, and the loss of such details would be inappropriate. Guidelines 1.11.A and B state, respectively, gutters and downspouts of box or built-in type should be repaired and rebuilt as needed, and gutters and downspouts if replacement materials should be appropriate to the building on which they are located, have the same size, shape, texture, and materials as the historic gutter and downspout system. Hanging type should be half round, rather K or OG style structures originally had OG style. Recommendation staff recommends disapproval as submitted. The applicant is here. Excuse me, Mr. Giacchio, thank you very much. You're welcome. Sir, um, if you would come back up uh, again, please. Um, <coughs> the floor is yours. Would you like to elaborate any on your? Well, yeah, um, based on what he was saying, 
it would be, I think it would be a little bit different if it was just a financial decision. Um, our neighbor to our right, left facing, recently had his box gutters re repaired to the tune of $20,000, and he's having a lot of leaks, a lot of problems. So it's not just a financial thing. It, it's, and it will be the financial part of the, the maintenance, we believe, um, with, the, with the fascia, with the, um, the eaves, um, all that stuff you know, will cost more down the line, we believe. And we haven't found, from our experience, enough knowledgeable uh, contractors out there to take care of you know, the, the issue. We've talked to a number of people that have had problems with these box gutters. So we understand the appropriateness of the historic, uh, you know, the look of the neighborhood, but when more than half of the houses have, um, you know, OG uh, gutters, and it's, it, it seems a little inconsistent with, you know, we already have some on our house. There's already a lot of other ones in the neighborhood. There's not a lot of good people that can do it, can do it find, you know, in a reasonable price. Um, my neighbor, he, you know, he can't even get the guy to handle his warranty issue with it. These guys can't be found. And uh, it just none of those seems kind of things seem to make sense as far as us putting $20,000 plus into the box gutters when we could have numerous problems and it wouldn't and it'd be seem out of place with everything else. In the, not out of place, but like we wouldn't be the only one with the OG gutters in the neighborhood. So. Thank you very much. Let's see if the, uh, any of the board members have any comments or questions for you. The, uh, the photos you submitted then are not, they're simply examples of other OG gutters in the neighborhood. They're not by any means houses that have replaced their box gutters with external gutters. So uh, just to clarify, is that what you were showing us? From my, yeah, from my, well, I didn't take the pictures, but yeah, from my understanding, I, I, I don't know whether they were down, um, uh, box gutters before that or, yeah. I didn't think they were, but I wanted to just clarify that. Also, uh, has have you done any work with the staff up till now to find any list of contractors that can help this, this work? They've been a part of your work so far. We have. And I think numerous uh, bids that we received were from uh, uh, people that Amelia, I believe Amelia's in, in um, had, had recommended. So, um, so yes. Those are all the questions I have right now. Thank you, Mr. Hosfield. Ms. Sumner? Mr. Billings? Uh, before I, 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 I go out to the, the audience, there were a couple of, um, uh, do you have any idea about the, the condition of the, the lining? Is it deteriorated all the way around to the point where it has to be replaced? And yeah, you, you might not be in there. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I couldn't, uh, I, I, had enough, I had enough personal conversations with the actual um, people doing the bids and, and uh, to to know the current condition of it, I've sure. been up there, and it's been it has deteriorated in a number of places. But, um, uh, but the reason yeah. the reason I, I bring it up there there are a couple of um, alternatives to completely replace, replacing the uh, the lining of the box gutter if the metal's not too too far gone. Uh, there are a couple of um, I, I know a brand name. It's sort of a fiberglass uh, membrane system that's sort of applied to the existing liners um, that would not require the removal of the metal and, and, and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. I believe they're much less expensive. I think we've looked into, my wife is, I mean, this has been a pretty long process with her, and she has, I mean, just because we got a lot of things going on, I can't remember every conversation I had, but she has been pretty diligent in looking at all these alternative options. We have bids from over 10 people, and a lot of them who would make recommendations with different liners, like you're talking about, things that would, but um, everything that we looked at um, was either to do it right, so arm and leg, anything less than that um, was just going back to the similar problems that, you know, that we're having now. Um, you know, that from everything I understand, you either have to, you know, like to do it right and and sink the money into the guys that, that wanted you know, spend 20k and above to do it right, or anything else that you put in there, you're going to have similar problems with uh, that what we're having now. Mm -hmm. So, 
I, again, I can't speak. I'm sorry, I can't speak that's clearly. A, that's okay. Uh, I just what, wanted to, yeah. to bring it up, and if you weren't aware of it, I, th I think it sounds like you, you or your, 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 your wife might have been aware of and had the similar conversation with contractors. But I just wanted to be aware there are a couple of alternative systems if the, the, the existing fabric isn't, isn't deteriorated too, too far. Right, and it's, it's, it's not just that the, the lining, but like I said, we've got a lot of problem like with the ease and I believe in the facets. I'm not sure all the terminology of it, but there's a lot of problems with the wood um, because it's deteriorated. Um, we, got, we bought this house after some deterioration that occurred you know, from, um, after it was inspected by someone who government didn't make him do much of requirement back down. I think that some things have changed, but the, you know, we, we didn't get a very good home inspection, and I'm sure there's some problems to start with. So it, this has deteriorated pretty bad, and everyone we talk to says once they get in there and they pull some things out, they pull some shingles away, there could be a lot of rotted wood, a lot of, a lot of major problems that, sure. And uh, just so you know, the uh, six bids, I believe there are six bids uh, that you had turned into staff with your application were, were part of our packet. So we, okay. have, we, we have those and have, have read them. Ms. Sumner? Sure, I can comment. <clears throat> um, your wife has been working with the staff, is that correct? Correct. Um, Ms. Kerr, may I ask you then, do you, um, has she read the guidelines or discussed them with you and is familiar with them? Uh, that I can't attest to because it's been uh, Ms. Armstrong that she's I been in contact with, um, who is away, Ms. Armstrong is away this week. So I've okay. not personally had uh, any interaction with the applicant's spouse. Okay. Um, but I know that Ms. Armstrong has. Well, for me, in reviewing the guidelines, sometimes the guidelines can be a little gray or there, there are areas where some interpretation can occur. Um, in this case, the guidelines for me, I, I can't speak for my fellow board members, are, are very clear that the existing um, architectural details uh, should be maintained um, and not replaced or mimicked with a false sense of architecture, et cetera. And there are several guidelines listed here for us to review. and. Um, I mean, from my opinion, I, I think it's pretty clear and, and would agree that the staff, I would agree with the staff's recommendation that to replace these gutters, it, there's, there's more than one issue. Replacing the gutters with um, just a, a standard OG metal gutter um, would be terribly sad to see your lovely home have that on it. That, and that is my opinion. Um, to remove crown molding details in addition to that, again, is an, <clears throat> excuse me, is another, um, uh, I think that would be another tragic event. So I, coupled with the, you know, the, adding an OG gutter, removing crown molding and architectural details um, that make a 1915 home great, um, I, I would have to agree with the staff that it's not an appropriate thing to ask for. Thank you, Ms. Sumner. In the, would anyone in the audience like to speak to this case this evening? I'd also like to point out that, I mean, a portion of this house, you realize before it was, this was done, has already had OG gutters on it. So I guess maybe, maybe at what point do you personally, I guess it's obviously a personal opinion, mm -hmm. at what point, what percentage of that house has to be um, I don't know. And I don't know. I can't tell so, from the photographs what part of the house and perhaps uh, when was it on an addition or was it on the original portion? And what it's on, it was on an addition. Okay. But the addition was done obviously before, um, you know, the, the north side had come into the historic district. So it was, so, so it's, yeah. so I guess that's what I'm trying to get at is at what point, what portion of the house. So it's to me, it's, there is a gray area there. It, it is a matter of, um, you know, if have, like I said, there's a portion of the house. So this would this would make it consistent. consistent I speak look. I speak from with two hats. One is as a board of architecture review member interpreting the guidelines, which are very clear in my opinion. And the other hat is as an architect, the details of on this home make it great, and um, that's what we're trying to do is preserve our history. And if everyone in Lexington ripped stuff off there. Um, really well-built, architecturally significant structures, Lexington surely wouldn't be as pretty as it is. 
Um, yeah, if you're talking about prettiness, yeah. my wife's an interior designer, and we've done nothing but make that house prettier. And so um, we've, you know, we've done as much as we can. It, it was, it was, you got to understand, too, it was something about, you know, the first thing I said was, you know, you know, it's a box gutter. That's one thing that makes it look, you know, it, it does. It makes the house, you know, have some historic significance to it. And, but once you go around the whole neighborhood, I mean, I didn't even notice, to be serious, I didn't even know what a box gutter was. The difference between a box gutter and just the wood, I mean, that's really all that's being removed. It's just the crown molding. So you're still going to have the, the look of the wood on the side. You can't even really notice. You notice because you're an architect. But not too many other people notice, and I'd, I'd beg to, if, if too many people who come in here would ever notice the difference. Like I said, we've done a lot to keep the integrity of the house, to keep the make everything look nicer, um, build the value of the houses and house around us. So um, at that point, when I, when I personally looked at it, it was a matter of, um, you know, in, in the long run, be for the next person who gets the house, um, you know, it'll be more financially viable uh, decision for them, less maintenance, um, and it didn't really overall change the view of the house. And most, some of the house, which is a pretty large portion on the back, already had OG gutters. So. so. Thank you. Mr. Bellows? Can the staff put back up the picture of the front of the house? I think it was maybe one of the first pictures shown during Mr. Janaki's presentation. Is there one of the rear of the house? Yeah. Is that the only location where the current the currently has OG gutters? Yeah, you're Along the the left, all the way from all the way left corner, um, it's to the shed addition. Yeah, just on right there. Okay. So that's, so that's, only, a, that's a large addition. So I mean, it looks it looks like a twenty by twenty room, maybe twelve by twenty, something like that. It's closer, to, I think, eight by eight feet. Eight by eight feet. Eighteen. Eighteen by eighteen. <laughs> Pretty good guess. Good. That was a pretty good guess. Um, tech and I'm not an architect. <laughs> or engineer. So that just my that's the only place with OG gutters in. Everything else is box gutters. Yeah. Um, do you have any letters or feedback from your neighbors regarding this application? Letters no and and um yeah, to be serious, I don't really talk to my neighbors a lot, so uh, I haven't personally. I'm sure Aaron has, yeah. Okay. But you don't know what they've said one way or the other. I just know there's some well I know there's some strict preservationists on that street who appeared to us before times, and obviously they got notice of this. I didn't know if you'd had any feedback from them. I don't see them here, and um, like I said, when a larger portion of the, I think eight of the 13 houses on the street have a Well, way. and that's, I think that you have done a good job of trying to go to the other houses and show where other houses have, and I can't tell from the pictures whether they're half round or OG, but they certainly don't have box cutters. I can't tell from those pictures whether those are original to the houses, and most of them they appear to be, or whether they were box cutters that had been converted to half round or OG. It, it, they look like they were originally built with half rounds or OG gutters or some type of similar um, exterior gutter. I, I can't be sure of that because of the pictures, but that's my guess from looking at the style of the houses. Um, you, this is the kind of case that I, that I get torn about because if you look at the gutters and downspouts guidelines, um, 11, uh, Chapter 1, Section 11, A, um, and B, they talk about should. It says built-in box gutters or hidden gutters should be preserved and repaired as needed. Um, if new hanging gutters are required, half-round designs are the most historically accurate. K or OG design gutters of aluminum may be considered. And then gutter, uh, A says gutters and downspouts of boxed or built-in type should be repaired and rebuilt as uh, needed. B, if replacement... Materials should be appropriate to the building on which they are located, have the same size, shape, texture, material as the historic gutter and downspout system. Hanging types should be half round rather than K or OG unless structure originally had OG style. Uh, I, have to, I think we need to balance that with guideline one in rehabilitation renovation, section one architectural detail reviews that talk about architectural details shall be maintained. And that's, a, I think, a mandatory versus a should, which is a permissive term. Um, and then you look at uh, 11B, which says should be repaired rather than replaced, again indicating that the box gutters, uh, they favor it. Um, difficult thing is the board member is trying to balance sometimes things that have two different things. In my mind, the box gutters are a significant historical feature of the house. Um, 
in owning an older house that was that is not an H1 area that I live in, but is older, I completely understand the economics behind wanting to do things certain ways, um, and it's it's problematic. Um, and there's not always a good balance about how to how to f fix those problems because box cutters are expensive <laughs> to deal with. Um, I don't think that any type of OG gutter would be appropriate on this structure. Um, I don't know if you could spot repair these or if a potential half round design might work, although I think it still tears up the architectural detailing of it. Um, but it's a tough decision um, in my mind because I completely understand the economics of twenty or thirty or thirty five thousand dollars to fix some box gutters. Um, in looking at the pictures you've submitted, I don't know this, but um, I don't know how much of the gutters actually need re the entire box gutters need replaced versus sections of them being repaired. Um, I can tell in at least um, two areas there's water run over um, and it looks like the soffit's actually falling apart where I, I guess, I'm guessing the metals rotted out. Yeah, I mean, these are things, things have been relined a number of times in patching areas to the point where there's little to no curvature within that gutter. I mean, that's why it's just going over the edge because it's been repaired and repaired and repaired because future previous homeowners didn't want to foot the bill. So, um, Having to balance those guidelines, um, I don't know if another solution might be appropriate, but I, I don't think OGs would be appropriate in this case. Do you have any recommendations? What other when you are you talking half round? Or are you in? Um, that there's no there's no um, I mean, I don't have before me a proposed half round system that would try to preserve the architectural integrity. So I don't know what it would look like. I don't know if that could be done because I think it would still require the removing of crown molding. So you still have that same issue there. Um, so, so I'm not sure, and I know I, I'm, I'm okay. very aware of the time you all put into this. This is not a an application you threw together and said, "Here's one bid, let us do this." I mean, your wife has definitely spent a lot of time doing background, and has clearly worked with Amelia to get this done. Um, and I appreciate that effort. And I'm trying to, I'm, in my mind, I try to balance those things because it's a tough decision to to want a property owner to be able to do things to their house that keeps the value of it, that keeps it in shape, doesn't become. Uh, what, I would call, what everyone calls demolition by neglect in Lexington, which I'm sure you've heard about, which basically people say, fine, I'm not going to do it then. Also, the house move out and it becomes torn down over time um, from neglect more than anything else, um, and at the same time wanting to preserve the properties for their, for their beauty. Um, I, I think at this time that I can't approve an OG gutter um, under the guidelines. Anything else, Mr. Hossfield? I have a few comments and a question or two. Um, in the staff findings, they state that the owners, uh, they mentioned state historic tax credit. Have you pursued that at, at any rate? Oh, yeah. I mean, we understand, you know, what, you know, I, we understand the tax credit, and, and it's, it's, it's not significant enough to, to make that decision. You're talking at Expenditure of over twenty thousand for a four thousand dollar tax credit. So, um, yeah. So we, yeah. So I, I understand it. And we pursued it. Four thousand is the extent that you found available at this point. I um. Oh, that's that's good for me to know. Um, I tend to agree with Miss Sumner as well. Um, the guidelines are pretty clear. Uh, you know, earlier it was stated that there was some gray area, but I believe 1.11 point B states appropriate to the building. I, I think that's the defining piece of that statement that means uh, in this case, because the building does have box gutter, gutters currently, that the appropriate replacement for those box gutters would be box gutters. Um, you mentioned and, and brought several instances of neighborhood homes uh, near yours that don't have box gutters, and I would just, yes, there are homes that have external gutters in your neighborhood, but those are appropriate for those homes, and, and box gutters are appropriate for your home because that's what it has now, and that's how it was built. Um, I sympathize with, with the cost of repair. It's unfortunate 
Things like this are more affordable to fix if they're maintained over time, and I know that's not your fault, uh, it looks like. From the description, these are problems that have been developing long before you've owned the house, and here you are saddled with neglect from previous owners, uh, and that's, that's a problem. I, I, there's really, <laughs> there's no way to force anybody to take care of this scale issue until it's a noticeable problem sometimes, and, and that would, have, would prevent this sort of large overhaul type repairs. I, I know that doesn't do you any favors, but that's, that's kind of the sad state of things, is if things aren't taken care of over time, they become big problems, and that's what you've ended up with is a, a big problem, and I'm sorry for that, but at the same time, I don't feel like the guidelines permit the box gutters being abandoned or covered up and new gutters, external type gutters, installed on the outside of the house. Even though it was appropriate for the addition, I feel like that's a separate issue. I don't think that because it was found appropriate for the addition, it would be appropriate then to change everything else on the house. I think they're two separate entities. Yeah, um, I mean, I guess we all understand. I mean, everyone I'm sure here, architectural board, you deal with all the time, understand that the actual box, the, the box part, the wood box is still saying, and that what's going to create the gutter is still create a look of that, you know, that's, I mean, that to me kind of still creates a look of that crown molding, but obviously, you know, we're not getting this through, so we wrap it up for these guys behind me, so. Let's see if anyone else has any comments or questions. Okay, no. Would I entertain a motion regarding this case, please? Mr. Chairman, in regards to case number 08730324-B, 324 Hampton Court, uh, per staff recommendation, I move that we disapprove the application as submitted. Thank you, Mr. Hosfield. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Thank you, Ms. Sumner. Any discussion of the motion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Stay. Thank you, Mr. Billings. Uh, motion carries. Although the applicant uh, has left the room, I thank him for his participation. <clears throat> and the next case we have this evening is in the Aylesford Historic District at uh, number seven Preston Court. The scope of the work is to wrap a fascia and soft it with metal. Um, is that applicant present? Sir, if you'd like to come forward, please, and give us your name and address. I'm Stuart Lowenthal. Move your address, please, sir. The address we're talking about or my address? Your address, sir, please. 2101 Lakeside Drive. Thank you, sir. Have you had an opportunity to read the staff's findings and recommendations regarding this case? I have uh, reviewed it. I just got it yesterday. Okay. Um, uh, are you in agreement with the staff's findings and recommendations? I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry. Are you in agreement with the staff's recommendations? Uh, no, or I wouldn't be here. Okay. Uh, well, let's have the staff run through the report for us so that we're all familiar with the project, and we'll be right back with you, please. Thank you. I'm taking the role of Amelia. Oh. <laughs> uh, this property in Preston Court, um, the preservation inspector encountered the uh, work in progress without any permits and uh, so stopped the work and has uh, since talked to the property owner uh, concerning the work that was going on and so forth. As you can see by the photographs, uh, the gable end on this bungalow, this is as it was when she encountered it, had already been wrapped in vinyl and uh, the bracket and, and uh, soffit and the whole thing. Um, per her discussions with the property owner, uh, they came to agreement that he would be able to continue work on other parts of the structure with a staff issued certificate of appropriateness um, reflecting the appropriate way to um, repair 
the, fasci the fascia soffit and the brackets, and um, so that part was issued at the staff level. Um, however, the existing gable that had already been wrapped is what is under discussion today. Um, the applicant is requesting retaining the vinyl wrap on the gable as you see it. And also, when was, he was doing repairs to the rest of the front facade, per that staff issued certificate of appropriateness, uh, the applicant wrapped the trim work in aluminum, and instead of using a wood soffit uh, board, he installed aluminum in that soffit. Um, the no work is proposed on the other elevations uh, outside of the confines of that staff issued certificate of appropriateness, so it is just this front uh, gable, vinyl wrap, and the aluminum uh, installation that is before you. The guidelines are in your uh, materials and the findings. Um, the proposal to wrap the soffits, the fascia, and the brackets of this uh, bungalow is not within the guidelines uh, nor appropriate for this um, historic house. In addition, the installation of the aluminum on any part of the cornice, the soffit, or the fascia and brackets uh, is not appropriate. Uh, the wrapping of the material obscur obscures the architectural features that are so characteristic of these bungalows, and they are significant uh, parts that should be retained and maintained. Uh, the guidelines are noted, as I stated, that uh, refer to this. Uh, the staff recommends that any aluminum or vinyl siding be removed and the eave be restored and repaired in wood uh, per the issued certificates of appropriateness uh, as discussed. The staff recommends disapproval is submitted, and as you're aware, the applicant is here. Thank you, Ms. Kerr. Sir, if you'd like to step back up, please. And the floor is yours. Okay, I tried to uh, accommodate Ms. Armstrong's uh, wishes, and I thought that I was. And I asked if there couldn't be a compromise between where I was in this project and the continued uh, rehabilitation of the project. And I must have misunderstood her. She said no vinyl. So I didn't use any more vinyl. And some of the vinyl that we had put up, we replaced with a wood product. And she refers to the soffit as metal wrap, but is this wood product. I don't know what you call it, but... You need to see it? No. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm familiar. Go ahead. I'm not sure what the soffit is, but is that underneath the uh, the overhang? Yes, so, sir. So that's what we're that's what's in the soffit. But before I even can I go ahead and talk while you're all looking at it? Absolutely. That? Yes, sir. Um, before I even got started in, on this, I, I looked at the neighborhood and I tried to de decipher, you know, what's going on here because there was such a hodgepodge of different designs and uh, covers and looks. So I have uh, two pictures I'm going to share with you. Certainly. It might be possible to have staff put those up on the overhead projector. Absolutely. So if we'll start up there in the upper top left hand, that's, uh, and this is what the, of the 11 houses on that block, here are six of them. Uh, number five uh, is what you uh, what you want to uh, duplicate, as I understand, because that's the look, the cottage look. But it is in uh, considerable disrepair, and uh, that's one of the problems in maintaining the look. Is to try how can you get this where you wouldn't have to repair it uh, on a every four or five years. So I looked across the street to number 11. Yeah, 
Yeah, there you go. Number 11 is what I initially tried to uh, duplicate when uh, Ms. Armstrong came. I didn't know that I couldn't do that since the other houses on the block uh, had already had this. But I stopped at that point when the bottom gable was wrapped to pretty much look like uh, number 11. And I said, okay, I'm going to pull the carpenters off. I'll go back and do everything in a composite as much as I can. And that's uh, pretty much what you see on the gable above on number 7. But before I did that, we looked at the house across the street, directly across, which is number 12. Number 12 has retained the look. It's wrapped in metal, and it has a vinyl soffit. I thought that she agreed with that, but she didn't want vinyl, so that's when I used this hardy plank or whatever it whatever you call it. That's the material I have in the soffit. Now, I said I wouldn't go on, I wouldn't finish the work, but, you know, I, I just, uh, I try to keep nice properties, and this is a rental property. And if you looked at the south side, and, and uh, the staff had a picture of the south side, it was in need of repair. The, the uh, wood was rotting, and so we went ahead, we replaced the uh, rotten wood, and we've painted it so it's exactly as it was, which I'm sure will please you all. So what I guess I'm asking, is there any room for compromise to leave this lower gable alone for the time being? And let me try to live with it. Now, if you, you have the picture there, and so every... There's a lot of differences on that block. There's no consistency. Differences in color, differences in repair, differences in restoration, and in rehabilitation. So I'm asking that, uh, that I be allowed to leave it as it is for the time being, with the idea that later I'll get to it and redo that lower gable. Thank you very much, sir. Let's see if the, the uh, board members have any comments or questions for you. Well, sir, first of all, I'm, I'm wondering if the staff would like to address the applicant's question he ended with there. Uh, the final thing he asked was if the gable could be left as is, oh. wrapped temporarily until such time he can come back and yeah. fix it. Um, procedurally, there is no ability to have something be temporary in the H-1, the historic district process. It needs to be work that conforms with what permits are issued, and the work must be done, carried out with a permit. And so the thought that the process would be in a position to say, oh, well, just sit tight with it for a while and cope with it later, it's not empowered to do. It needs to have resolution that is within its guidelines and, and reflects the Board of Architecture Review's decisions um, as a final solution for any scenario. Thank you, Ms. Kerr. I, I just had a, a general comment that it sounds like there's a disconnect in interpretation. Uh, I do not have the certificate that was granted. Do you? Um, but my, correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding from what everyone has said, um, where Amelia may have communicated that vinyl is not acceptable, that, that's a general rule, right? Vinyl is, is right out. But beyond that, uh, the other problem that we would have with the wrap that has occurred so far, regardless of the material, is that it's obscured the original architectural detail by simply bundling or wrapping it all and enclosing it, that that does away with the detail that we would prefer was maintained and, and is actually pretty clearly stated that way in the guidelines. 
for the boards and, and the applicants information just putting the permit as it was issued up on their screen so everybody can see it uh, it's coming and if you'll look um, right above the now therefore it says the issuance um, let's scoot on up a little higher let's see very uh, uh, and the requests, there you go, number one, repair, rebuild, replace brackets, fascia, cornice, and soffit as needed with wood or composite materials matching the existing design. No vinyl is permitted. And then the conditions are noted below, just above the near, now therefore. Uh, number one, that the pros work be consistent with the plans and specifications presented and discussed uh, with the staff, in essence, um, on June 26, 09 and uh, any parts to be replaced or to match the existing material and design. Thank you, Ms. Kerr. I've never seen that. Was that mailed to me? Yes, that'd be correct. And would you have a, was it certified? No, we send our permits out regular mail, but Ms. Emil, Ms. Armstrong um, mentioned to me she had met and discussed with you what was to be done per the agreed upon staff permit and I, so I know that there was conversation about it and certainly you should have received your paperwork in the mail reflecting your application which you submitted. And I may have, I just don't remember seeing it. I understand. Uh, but I guess it, it was already done what I had done and I stopped the work at that point. And, uh, and we made some changes to uh, what we had done to uh, handle the beams a little differently, uh, to make them consistent with uh, the other beams in the neighborhood. Uh, we did uh, keep the look on the higher gable, but we did wrap those, uh, except for the lower one, which uh, I don't think we lapped. We got some kind of a composite. Am I correct in understanding that number seven? I mean, I understand if you have case, but the picture number seven on your display board here is the same house we're talking about, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I would first note you you talked you've done a good job at pointing out some of the other houses in the neighborhood and the architectural detail and the material on um, both of the uh, gables um, as well as the architectural elements um, including the brackets and the cornice and soffits on those. Um, I think if you look at the ones from number 5, 12, and 13 and compare them to 7 and um, I'm guessing it's, I don't know what number this one is, uh, oh, I'm sorry 9, I see now, 9 and 11, that 7 in part, I understand that's one you're working on, but 9 and 11 specifically have lost almost all of the substantial architectural detail which makes these bungalows um, as beautiful as they should or could be. Um, and that the repair issue is um, that you point out with number five, there seems to be some repair issue but also just seems to be a maintenance issue with painting and general upkeep um, that just doesn't mean done at that property. Um, and as far as the paint color, I don't think the paint color is before us is an issue really. Um, as long as they're painted. Um, and I wasn't making an issue with the color. I, I, I thought you would mentioned color and it, because one of them has well, blue just, brackets instead of white And some of them are beige. You know, it's just, uh, okay. it's, it's difficult to maintain. And uh, that is a consideration as a landlord because I want to uh, try to get it where I don't have to go back and paint it every other year. Well, and I, I understand that consideration at the same and time. And I think my house looks better than any of them on the block. Are as good as the best houses on the block. Now, the, the guidelines aren't put in place to say does my house look better or not, um, because better is a very subjective term, unfortunately, and um, that's why the guidelines are here so that we can put as much objectivity as possible into each application. Um, does staff know what what has happened with the background for houses nine and eleven and their current status? No, without. Pulling up their files, I wouldn't know the information on that. 
Uh, generally, I know that some of the uh, changes that you're seeing had been made before the Aylesford Historic District, of which this is a part, uh, was put in place. That's what I would, that's what my question was getting to, is I wondered how much of that was done. Right. We have not researched uh, each individual building by any means to see when permits were issued, if they were uh, post-dating the Historic District's enactment, but uh, we were aware at the time that Historic District nomination was going forward that there had been substantial uh, vinyl wraps and changes made on this street. I think it's important to note here too, you stated you used a, a neighboring house as an example of, of how to do the work and that's not always a good idea. Uh, it, it doesn't you learn by mistakes sometimes mistake, and that yeah. was a mistake. You know I have uh, 25 pieces of property and uh, most of them are single family homes and I've been doing this for 30 years and I've always maintained them like you're seeing number seven and I've never run into this problem that I had I didn't know so ignorance I know is no excuse uh, so I've learned uh, that next time uh, I need to get an approval uh, before I do anything I didn't realize that because we've done work on this house before but I guess it's before the Alsford uh, Historic District uh, became into being. When Was that in 89? Is that what I read up there? It's in the late 90s. 97 or 98. 97 or 8. 98. I believe it was on the top of the certificate you just showed. Me. Oh, well, I'll look at that. <laughs> but yeah. it's, it's the late 90s. We'll get that. Oh, Randy, Randy's reading it there at the thing, 1998. That, that sounds about right. It's well, anyway, we, we all eight or pretty close I on that. It, it, is, it is. But then I might be a little dyslexic. Um, but um, I guess that doesn't make any difference. But I've had the house for a long time. And uh, then on the north side, it is all vinyl and guttered. And it's been like that since for years. Uh, and probably prior to the historic district. If oh. it's 89, I know it's been there. I mean, if it's 98. The uh, dates you're seeing, just for clarification, are tied to various um, administrative mandates where the Board of Architectural Review has empowered the staff to issue permits, and those were in 1989, 1990, and 1992. So those are empowerment statements to do with broad administrative charges, not about when historic districts are designated. The Aylesford District is either 1997 or 1998. Well, number seven pretty much uh, gives the look of the cottage and uh, the way I've left it. And the south side is, uh, you have a picture of the south side, and they were working on that today and replacing the wood and painting it. The uh, front view is as you see it, and... Uh, the gable has that look of the houses uh, that you'd like to have, and it's consistent with uh, some of the neighborhood. Uh, the lower gable is not. So I guess that's really what we're talking about is the lower gable. Is the underneath the, I guess it's a, that wood composite material that you showed, and the is it, is it the vinyl wrap or is it aluminum wrap on the lower gable? There's aluminum. Used. It's aluminum. Okay. I thought, with I thought you, I with thought, this is the soffit. Okay. Is the original soffit, I mean, the original soffit still in place underneath it? It just wasn't painted? It was painted rotted. Or and so um, the original soffit on the, uh, <laughs> it was rotten. And I've got. All the uh, way to the, uh, to all the way to this roof decking? Well, I've got a picture. I mean, I'm not sure. It's only like that. But that's, I mean, it should only be that thick, so it needs to be. It wasn't rotted, uh, rotten all the way through, but it was rotten where, you know, with the roof is nailed into it and the nails come through there. That's the current one. You really can't see it. You can see the rotten uh, fascia board, though. I can see the fascia board. In, in looking at the pictures, I think that. And the architectural details by wrapping it in vinyl or aluminum, 
it completely loses the architectural character of the original soffit. Um, you're talking about the lower soffit. That's correct. Well, I think the upper. It, I mean, the it, lower it, uh, soffit's like it is in this picture. It just needs painted. Is what it looks like to me. There might be some wood damage that needs repaired, but uh, it doesn't look like it's been wrapped in anything. Uh, that's from the picture. It appears that way. Maybe I'm wrong. It looks like maybe maybe the bracket was wrapped. I can't. I can't really tell. That's in vinyl, or is it also in aluminum? No, it's vinyl. No, I'm sorry. It is aluminum. When when you look at number twelve that you uh, mentioned as an example of the look. That is wrapped in aluminum and has a vinyl soffit. Well, in looking at um, your property uh, and, and not the others, the um, uh, for, for me, the, the wrapping is clear that the guidelines say that that is not appropriate to do, and especially in the treatment of the bracket um, where the dimension of the lumber has been lost, where it's just been wrapped as one entity, one triangular thing, you know, as opposed to three individual pieces of lumber or something. So the, you know, the problem with wrapping with, with materials like, like um, well, any material is you lose the, the the quality and just the inherent nature of the original material. So, I mean, that's what the guidelines are trying to protect. So I support the guidelines in this instance. The guidelines, I'll say, say consistent with the properties of similar design mm -hmm. and age in the surrounding area. So I'm taking the whole street, and that street is not consistent at all. And just to follow that that line um, of reason for a moment, the, uh, the the point of the guidelines was to make appropriate changes to the structures, which is why the historic district was created to help keep the integrity of the structures intact. And changes that uh, might have taken place before the creation of the historic district uh, may not be appropriate. Um, and I just wanted to, to point out that most of the changes that are, you're referencing in the, uh, the structures on that street were, are not appropriate to those structures and have actually um, adversely affected their integrity. I, I don't. So they're not jumping the hoops, but you want me to. Well, the district wasn't created when those inappropriate changes were made to the structure. The district is now in place, and we can't force people to go back and, and change something before a law was enacted or an overlay zone was created. Let's see if anyone in the audience has any comments or questions. This case, does anyone on the board have any further comments or questions? Okay. Do you have any further comments or questions, sir? I guess not. I never man is the woman to put him there. Donna, is there anything that you would <laughs> I would. Well, I hadn't say. She's asking about maintaining the composite board <coughs> under the uh, soffit. I believe you already have a staff issued permit to use a composite material for the soffit. So, and it's, it's real, uh, mentioned in here as a vinyl. No, the vinyl is reflective of that which is on that gable, which is you've talked about. I have not been out to this property myself. Amelia has been handling this, but um, what is she's noting? The other piece of the violation is if there are wraps of metal over wood elsewhere. And um, you and she, I think, have talked about those. Um, so anywhere beams. that you have yeah. covered the wood elements with a metal or an or a excuse me a vinyl fabric would, um, the staff uh, recommendation is that those coverings be removed and the wood returned to its um, configuration. If I may, and the staff report actually recommends disapproval is submitted, um, is what I think we actually have is there's a COA already in place with respect to some work. Anything, excuse me, the only thing before you 
are those items that are in violation okay. versus the items that were carried out under the approved staff certificate. Okay, because that's what I want to make sure of is that, is that it, before we put a motion on that we understand exactly what we're reviewing because I, as far as this wood composite material, that's already been approved by the staff, so we don't have to approve it. It would just be the removal of the wrap, the vinyl or, or aluminum wrap, whichever one has been used on either the gable or the bracket. I think it's important also to clarify which material has been approved for which location because I don't believe anyone was approving to wrap the brackets as they've been wrapped with any material. That's correct. correct. Whether it be previously approved composite material for the soffit or not, I think it needs to be clarified that composite material has been approved for the soffit by previous COA and that at this point we're discussing wrapping the fascia or the soffit with the new material uh, metal and, and the fascia being the brackets and the ornament off the eave of the house. Is that? Okay. And then, me too. And then there's aluminum on the very front trim, the very front fascia board under, underneath the gutter. Is that on the porch? Is that correct? It's hard. The black and white pictures. It's hard to tell what the materials are. I wonder if that was aluminum, or here where the gutters were. If that was aluminum. That's what I didn't know. No, the the porch area is not involved. It's the gable end. It's just the gable and the bracket. Okay. Certainly entertain a motion regarding this case, please. Mr. Chair, with respect to case number 1541007-C, located at 7 Preston Court, I move that the board uh, disapprove the application is submitted um, under the conditions that the COA that has previously been um, issued by the staff remains um, um, in place with the, uh, with the permission for the owner to, um, to move forward with the wood or composite material per the COA. Thank you, Mr. Billings. Is there a second to the motion? All second. Thank you, Mr. Hosfield. Any discussion of the motion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Sir, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, the next case is in the South Mill, is on uh, 353 South Mill Street. The scope of the work is demolish addition, construct addition, garage, and site work. The applicant has requested that we postpone the hearing on this case until September 9th, 2009. Could I please have a motion to that effect? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second. second. Uh, thank you. Any discussion of the motion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, that concludes the certificate of appropriateness applications for this evening. I will now move into a uh, less formal portion. Um, called a conceptual review. This is an opportunity for the for applicants to bring ideas to the board uh, that haven't evolved into a uh, uh, into a, a state in which uh, uh, a certificate of appropriate application is ready to be created. Um, and uh, this evening we have uh, a conceptual review for 312 North Limestone Street in the Constitution Street Historic District and the scope of the work is to construct a banquet addition. Um, Mr. Ginocchio, Ms. Kerr, who has the honor of presenting this this evening? Ms. Kerr. Uh, yes, the application or the uh, conceptual review, I should say, that is before you is one that you all are very familiar with. Um, as you say, at 312 North Lime, um, this is the uh, Carrick property and the applicants have after their previous conceptual review uh, gone back and worked further on their proposal and, and uh, made uh, several adjustments the primary one of which is to reduce the square footage of the proposed addition by some approximately 900 square feet um, in doing so here's of course a front view of the property I, I think you all are quite familiar with it at this point, but uh, we can zip around very quickly. Um, this is the area the parking lot is proposed to go where the tent is situated at the present time. And 
And then um, this area, some of this will be the parking area, and then over to the left of the image will be where the proposed new build is uh, to go. This is looking from the east toward Limestone Street, seeing, of course, the rear elevation of the historic mass, and then the temporary buildings, tents that are in proximity at the present time. Some of this parking would stay and be reconfigured, obviously. And then the new addition would come off the back in this vicinity. Um, it would stay within the uh, sight line and footprint line uh, on the edge toward 3rd Street of the historic mass of the house. Now the trees, there's been discussion, um, I know you'll recall at the previous conceptual review about the need to protect uh, the viable trees. The applicant has since that previous meeting um, consulted both with Tim Query, our um, urban county government arborist, and also Dave Leonard, who's a tree consultant here in town. And they both have concurred that the tulip poplar needs to be removed, but that the white ash is very significant um, tree, that it should, they're recommending it be treated for the uh, emerald ash disease, which is unfortunately coming toward all of our historic and other ash trees, um, and that it be retained and every effort be made to retain it. Um, the other, and I will leave for the applicant's architect to explain to you the nuances of the adjustments that they are making in this proposal as, it, as it's evolving. But um, the other thing to note, um, here's the site plan and the uh, footprint. You will see that where they have reduced, and you all have this in your packet, of course, and they have uh, marked uh, where they've reduced the square footage and so forth as had been previously presented. Um, they have utilize that reduction in the building to uh, increase the size of what would be the open veranda on the uh, east or northeast elevation toward the um, other property. Um, and here it is with the parking lot and so forth and just more of a footprint. As you can see, you can see it's um, thrash marks where they have reduced the uh, proposed. Thank you. And then in that uh, footprint area would be a, a, a slight enlargement of what had been proposed to be a veranda area. So it would uh, reduce the uh, square footage of the structure, keep the footprint of the coverage, utilizing part of that for that veranda. Um, we have noted, of course, the guidelines since this is an informal conceptual review. We do not have any findings. Um, however, we have enumerated some questions for consideration. These questions for consideration continue to be uh, similar to those that we put forward in your last conceptual review, so I will not go through each one of them. Um, the, the scenarios that they address continue, the staff believes, to be issued to be weighed in this proposal. And uh, with that in mind, we will uh, close our part for the moment. And uh, the applicant, of course, is represented, and I'm sure we'll have materials to further explain to the board um, their adjustments and additional changes. I would note, even though this is a conceptual review, that we have received some communications, letters and such on this topic from neighbors and so on, and uh, from a landscape architect. That material is in here as well. Um, the applicant did include some uh, sort of fact sheet with their drawings that I think was tucked into your drawings, and you would have found that as well. So with that, we'll turn it back to you. Thank you very much, Ms. Kerr. Please, the, it's, it's the, relaxed, the relaxed time now. So please, very please cool. come forward. Very cool. um, for the record, I'm Rena Wiseman uh, here for GCL Properties, LLC. Thank you for the opportunity to come back. I think this is our third conceptual review, but we feel like we're making progress. We felt like last month's meeting was very, very helpful. Uh, to us, and I'm going to have Clayton Farmer come up and go through those changes with you. I just wanted to hit a couple of, of points uh, about it before he gets up to talk about the details. Uh, one, and I know that he will go through this, but we, we did address what we felt were the concerns, the primary concerns <coughs> raised by the board last month have specifically the size of the addition, the height of the glass atrium, uh, the tree, which Betty has already talked about, we are, if you see the letter from Elizabeth Sin, we're in consultation with Dave Leonard, and he will be preparing a report 
that will outline the steps that need to be taken to preserve the tree both before, during, and after the construction. Of course, it needs to immediately be treated for the emerald ash or I'm not sure if that's the right term, but that bad boy that's hurting the trees. Um, we also, uh, there was a request that we have better graphics to show the addition. Clayton has got 3D drawings that he will show. These drawings, however, don't reflect the reduction in size. They were already being produced when this was, uh, uh, when we made the decision to remove some square footage, but he can point out where that is uh, reduced. I think he can also explain there may be some confusion in the, uh, the site plan, but the footprint does get reduced because I believe he is moving the patio, taking off the 900 square feet, which is coming primarily from the banquet room, and taking that off and moving the patio back. So I'm not sure the footprint shows that clearly, but that is certainly the intent is to reduce the footprint as well as the size of the addition. Uh, one point I did want to emphasize, I know a couple of you weren't here at the previous conceptual review, but you were at the other one, is that the primary purpose of this addition is to eliminate the need for the temporary structure. I think as we've discussed before, the whole function of the Carrick House is for a banquet facility. And the Carrick House, while it's 8,800 square feet, is a house and it's divided into rooms and as such it can accommodate groups much smart, larger than 50 or 60. Uh, to be a viable banquet facility you have to be able to accommodate a 300 person wedding. That would be the maximum that we could do. The average wedding is about 210 people and so there has to be some size to this addition to make this a viable banquet facility because in and of itself the Carrick House can't accommodate that. That's why the uh, addition is needed. And this is going to be a $3 million addition to the Carrick House. And with the addition reduction, we are still at the point we can accommodate what we think is the uh, number of guests at a wedding to continue to make this viable. But I think we're starting to reach the point of diminishing returns as to when it would not be uh, beneficial to, to build the addition, but we are, uh, I think we're moving in the direction the board want us to, wanted us to move in. With that, I'm going to ask Clayton to uh, go over the key points. The last thing I did want to mention, Betty alluded to it, I don't know if she's gotten any other letters, but we did meet uh, yesterday afternoon with Linda Carroll and John Morgan, who own the business across the street, and as you know, have been before you many times with their own projects, both on 3rd Street and on North Limestone. And she sent an email that I think is in your packet to voice support for this, uh, the, the addition. We presented the latest version to them yesterday along with the elevations. And so uh, we are very pleased to have their support for this addition. And I don't know if any other letters have come in. That's the only one I'm aware of. So with that, and I know it's getting late. I'll turn it over to Clayton to try to run through the slides as quickly as possible and make sure you all get a chance to give us your input back and forth and go from there. Thanks. Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Ms. Wiseman. I would confirm that we do have the copy of the uh, email that, that um, Ms. Carroll sent in. And that, and that has been the only new material to come in? The others are carry forwards from the previous? Mr. Farmer, the floor is yours, sir. And I have two copies. I have two copies. Three views each. I think I will. Randy, do you already have a copy? Yes. Oh, excellent. I apologize for not uh, uh, clearly indicating they were, we were reducing the patio or moving the patio in. Uh, I, I just really want to show the uh, reduction in square footage on the building, and uh, but we are going to move that in, which will give us uh, more land on Lake Alley. 
Just to clarify, so you're saying it will stay the same dimensions and just slide on in? Yes, it'll, it, it'll be a 20 foot space. Okay. Give you a few minutes to look at that. And the building, uh, the building does still set back uh, 13 feet from uh, from the uh, uh, Third Street side of the Carry House at the, the, on the rear, so it doesn't line up with the Carry. It has a bigger setback on Third Street. And the tree that we have in the rendering is not nearly as big as the ash tree that's really there because we tried drawing it that big and it practically blocked out the building. <laughs> so we reduced it in size to show the building. Do you anticipate any changes to the dimension of the addition around the ash tree I know you haven't seen we did draw uh, uh, in talking to the uh, landscape architect and, and her talking to the arborist they didn't show a lot of concern about the distance around it they did show concern about the excavation mm -hmm. when we would do that and uh, and mr. Leonard is going to put together a guideline for us that's going to tell us how to excavate around the ash tree and to keep the roots from being damaged but I did on my plan, and, it, and I'm, I know you couldn't read it to, to see it, but I, I moved that set back in another six feet okay. than, than you had on the last drawing. Thank you for clarifying that. So really from, uh, from the center of the tree to the building right now, it's about 16 feet. The front entrance still has uh, the limestone facing, and the uh, rest of the house is uh, painted white brick, or rest of the addition. Do you have a picture of an elevation from limestone? No, we uh, we tried to do that, but it, and and it, it 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 didn't it didn't really show anything because we uh, when you well, that's exactly why I ask why when you when you go when you, when you go to the front of the the front corner of the uh, of the property gets down the hill and you're looking back up at the at the Carrick House and when you see the Carrick House the the addition is just a blur from. What? How about from the back side of the property um, along the, um, um, I can't remember the name of the school right now, the traditional magnet school that's um, on the, on the. Lake side. Alley? I'm sorry? Uh, it's, not, it's not Lake Alley. Lake Alley sort of on the, is, is, is parallel to Limestone on the other side of Third Street. Miss. I'm talking about the fence line on the back side of the school. I, I don't, rem I walk that, this, this block all the time with my dog. I don't remember what I know. There's an access road on the back side of, of the house currently, but I don't know how close the school is to there. One of the things in the guidelines is we actually look at a property on the 360. If you have an elevation for the back side, what it would look like, knowing that most public is not going to be back there. I recognize that. You, you have a I have a drawn elevation, but we we don't have it in the in the 3D form. Is the back going to have, be glass? Um, yeah, the the other side of the building, outside of the loading dock area, it looks remarkably the same as this. As a matter of fact, the, the the back end looks exactly like this. On on this. Well, I'm not talking about the the loading dock itself. I'm talking about about this area here. Yeah, that area there is this. It's a parallel to.
Have you each, looked at some each um, column? Each column right here. Okay. Um, have you all looked at um, traffic flow back on? Um, is Lake Alley large enough for the traffic flow onto and out of Third Street for a parking lot this size? Are you asking if we've done a traffic count or? I, I'm not. I, I guess no. It's probably. Be, I don't even know if you'd need to do that to satisfy engineering. Lake Alley is not a full size street. Right. And you have here showing two way access, and you're increasing the size of this. Of the, my my impression is that you're increasing the size of the surface parking area by doing this. And I don't know if that's accurate. Or right. Not. We're 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 providing more room than Lake Alley now provides. Okay. So that would be you, you would have to do some widening there. Yeah, we'll have, to, we, the we'll, have, we'll have to slightly widen that okay. by about five feet. Lake Alley, uh, if I remember correctly, Lake Alley gives us a, about 15 feet, and we'd like for that to be about 20. Just to kind of echo on, on something Mr. Billings brought up there, I'd like to see the elevations, and I think for the application, we're going to need to see the elevations for the rear of the building and the page north side of the building that, that aren't shown now, just because they are quite different in plan. Uh, you've got the lower roof on the page north side over the restrooms and mechanical space, so that it's going to be different. Um, but that'll be part of the final application. Right, right. You, yeah, we, need to see. we really have a lot of that already done. And, uh, we had to get it done to get this far. I understand. It's, I don't know what it looks like. I can see it in plan, and I can imagine, based on the elevations you've given me, but I'd like to see the final drawings when the time comes. My initial impression, excuse me, is that this has come a whole, a, a very long way from the, I believe it was in February, um, conceptual review with shifting the building back, <laughs> trying to, um, what I would say, complement but not mimic the historical structure on the front. Um, in that regard, a couple of things. One is, are the columns going to be the exact same as on the front? Or are they going, I, in my mind, I, I think I remember the columns in the front actually tapering up a little bit at the top. No, the columns are are, are straight. Are they, they're they straight columns? Yeah, okay. Yes. For some reason I was thinking they tapered for something. But, no, um, no, they, they I, actually I thought they tapered too, but they, they don't. Okay. My, first, my first impression was. Um, I'll say, there, I don't know the um, was this mentioned in the, previous meeting? the new main entrance because I assume that would be the main become the main entrance. Yes. It's it. Well, actually, I think I, if I understand the owner's intent, the owner's intent is for the most part is to bring people through the carry house uh, to the banquet hall. That may be his intent, but I'm a realist. That's people people follow a line from their car <laughs> to the door after yes. a wedding for one right. For, right. for one of two reasons. Right. So let's not kid ourselves yeah. about yeah. what's going to yeah. happen. I, they're not going to be sheep. So <laughs> um, people may enter through the care house main doors, but they're going to enter right. through, this, through this unless the doors are locked, and they're not going to be. I don't have a problem with that really. Um, this the the new I'm going to call it the new main entrance. It almost strikes me to have some hint of a um, of a flat church building that would have been built in like the 50s or 60s without a whole lot of architectural detail that I think could be brought in to complement the other house uh, or the main house, perhaps even the style of the windows. Um, understanding mm -hmm. you want to keep the balance with the light. The other thing is I think I would make the porch area larger to complement the front. Um, currently, it looks like the columns are literally set right up against the glass, so that there's not a lot of cover area there. And, um, uh, I don't know if that can be done. I, I'm, I'm reflecting yeah, to you the, my my thoughts on senior design and what I think would be appropriate under the guidelines to maintain the 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 distance of the columns uh, on the carry house uh, only allows about uh, about feet, four maybe. feet from the back of the column to, to the house. So I'm thinking from the front of the porch to the to the doors are eight or ten feet, is my I guess. Is that about right? I, I have about 18 inches behind the column to the glass. Okay. Um, something I would suggest you maybe look at, though, is bringing the new main entrance yeah, to giving reflect. Giving more depth. Accessing it more, yeah. Yeah, to reflect a, a, a more um, historical porch that the front of the carriage house reflects rather than more of an institutional 
front facade that is here now. Um, one of the reasons you really have this whole wall is basically brick block and glass and that by building some type of porch or uh, portico here I think you can maybe bring a little bit more style that reflects the yeah, you, you have a feeling that more of a portico there would be more acceptable for, yeah and, and for the two reasons that one I think that this is a very 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 modern structure that's going on the back of a very historic structure and that um, by far it's a whole lot better than February and I'm trying, and in my mind, it needs to complement and still point to the historical nature of the Carrick House. And this is this balance that I, don't, I talk about all the time. I don't know how to do it every case. Yeah. Which is, you don't want to imitate because the guidelines say you can't imitate it. At the it's, same time, you want to complement. Believe me, we, it's an we, art. we've got piles of and design paper you, on the floor. I know you're aware of it. Um, but this, that's what this conceptual review is for, is for us to discuss that. That's right. something that it, I think At one time, I thought about, you know, we, we tried to play around with putting a... a a pediment on it, but then it really started to really take away from the Carrick House, and and then we started to get more height. And um, on the pyramid sunroof, I, I I don't see that in one of the it, it, it doesn't show third elevation drawings. It doesn't show. Um, and I tried to find this in my guidelines quickly, and and um, I believe there's a guideline that says that accessory structures shall not exceed the height of the original structure. Right. Um, and I don't know if the staff can help me out. Is that is that what it says, Mr. Janakia or, or Betty? Isn't it is. that, it, we've discussed that correct. before, but if you look at uh, the drawn elevation. We're, we're 24 feet high. The bin dropped down. I couldn't tell from this drawing yeah. where the bin dropped down below it, or that was the original from last month. Yeah, this was. Um, no, still, still your that, yes. That's the original from the, last right. month. The dashed line shows where it was. I couldn't tell from this drawing. Right. Thank you. Perfect. And we can we can take it to dead flat, but we found out doing the renderings that in in in, 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 in the wire frame we do a wire frame rendering, and the, the, we had to get awfully high to even even see the, the skylight. Can the staff speak to uh, the fiberglass columns in reference mm -hmm. to imitating history? Are we anywhere near the line there? <laughs> the line that doesn't need to be. Um, it wouldn't be the staff's take on it that you're close to mimicking history. Uh, they are, you know, in the concept of, but I don't think anybody would confuse that these are contemporary columns, um, okay. particularly the way the fenestration is handled across the top where the column has the piece on top before it hits the, the uh, main rectilinear, um, I was going to say pediment, although usually pediments are triangulated. Right. But, um, so, in terms of the frontispiece that is the entrance bay, uh, no, I I would not, as staff, suggest that it is treading into the mimicking history territory. Okay. Um, also, that, that's just a question I could go either way. Um, the There are a few things in the drawings you've given us that don't match the rendering, and I'm wondering which one is is correct. Yes, or which this one, one is, is correct. Uh, the uh, the owner liked the idea of the uh, of the windows on this end uh, being full glass instead of the uh, double decked area I like that I had shown, okay. and that was a, a a late revision that kept us up a couple of nights well into the morning trying to uh, get that corrected to to the owner's satisfaction. I like it. I think it's more honest about what's in the middle. There's no interpretation that it's a two-story space, but it's a one-story volume. Right. So I, I, that's fine with me. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, I, I should. Have, yeah, is, I missed point that out when I got up here. Got sidetracked, but I also think it helps break up the, uh, you know, the that facade. I mean, it's, it's almost reading as several different structures, sort of like what's going on across the street. You've got. Uh, several structures that are similar that are very very close together or you know, connecting. Right. To each other. I like I like I personally like the undulation of the of the buildings, which makes it. And um, and I, I know this doesn't necessarily uh, diminish the look of the building, but but there we have a number of trees in the parking lot that we don't show. That, right. That, and also on Third Street that that are going to kind of shadow the building a little bit. So that you don't get that kind of desert look that it sort of has now. 
How many current parking spaces are on that lot in the rear? Uh, counting the circle, there's 72. I think that's correct. How many are in the new proposed ones? I'm trying to count them, but you can answer probably quicker than I can do count. Uh, how many? The, the current proposal with the new parking, do you have a total number of spaces? 74, I think, is what you're showing. 74 okay, spaces. but how many do you have a permit or, or permission to use off site? Oh, I don't have the numbers on that. I, you know, but, it, a, but it's a, a good, slew of spots. I mean. Good. I, I wondered what the uh, take was on code review for parking provided versus your occupancy, if that's been addressed. It um, wouldn't be up to us. It'd be a code review. Right. That we, we have submitted that uh, along with the numbers of spaces, uh, and I, I, I believe it's more than adequate. I don't remember. I think the numbers meet the calculations work right. for, for uh, so the preferences, but just in terms of, and a lot of times those are understated from what's actually needed. Well, so yeah, we do have additional... We, you cannot, we can't use the off-site necessarily to meet required, so I think we have enough with this. With the 74? Yeah, yeah, based on the occupancy that we will ultimately okay. get a permit for. It would be terrible to get this all hammered out here and then find out you need twice as many parking spots right. in code review, so let's get a variance. Um, what efforts are being made at this point to um, to help do this project in a, in a green way, and that one of the things we've, we we talk more and more about in our hearings is um, the impact that the removal of green space is going to have. Understanding that we're basically trying to switch out parking lot for location now, we're still taking building a whole lot more building than we actually. Um, we're actually not paving much more than is already paved. Not paving, but the but the physical space of the structure is taking up a whole lot more than the current structure does. The square footage is the the footprint of the building has got to be bigger than the existing temporary structure. Well, actually, I think in terms of impervious surface, it I don't know, but the whole thing is um, all paved now. There's a park, all of here. I think the existing house is a parking lot. The next yeah. door was a parking is a parking lot and was. So, in terms of impervious space, I don't think we're adding any I have those numbers on in my file back in the office but it's more building but in terms of what's paved and where the water has been well, the, the main point I would is, is in my mind the way I'm looking at this is that the parking lot in the back is where the new structure is going you're not really losing any there it'd be where the existing temporary structure is forward to, to where you're bringing that parking lot forward into the circular drive um, and I don't and I don't think the, the square footage is, is a is a this is a do or die project but it is something that you're losing green space. That is one of the issues. That, that We're actually recovering some too with the uh, with the diagonal parking. We're picking up some green space uh, along Third Street, which we're going to turn into uh, a rain garden area. This is one of the things I would be just aware of and prepared to talk about when you come back for that okay. application. Sure. Or if in and if you're lose if if you're gaining to say gaining if you're losing losing we, or if you're we losing can do those calculations. opportunities or looking for some other green aspects of the mm -hmm. project. To be aware of and to implement um, to, That's a good to, point. to enhance sure. um, the guidelines. Yeah, we, we can provide that. Um, what would the standing room capacity of the structure be? I'm sorry? What would the standing room capacity of the structure be? Capacity? Uh, uh, as drawn right now, it, it's it's drawn to, to seat 280. I'm, I'm talking about standing, not seating. Standing? Oh, I, I haven't figured out standing. Uh, it, we want to figure it as a banquet facility. Okay. Um, that's one of the things that... Some you, of the are you saying something like a uh, a band performance or something like that? or One of the letters from the neighborhood people asked that question. And oh, I do remember that. Spe and specifically is, I understand the primary use will be a right. banquet facility, but certainly it would be beneficial for this structure to be able to be used for other events that may be standing room or mingling without tables. And so I think that's something to okay. to, to keep in mind as, as, as you want to move forward to application if you don't know that currently. We, we can provide that calculation also. Well, but we're going to be, I mean, occupancy is just like the current care yeah. house is governed by the certificate of occupancy. I mean, I don't, 
So that's going to be governed more by building code and prior code. I was. If the answer is what they're going, to, they're going to tell us. Then. I was going to say the same thing that they based on the square footage. It may not be any of our business. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's a great idea that it'd be a versatile structure and be something that the community can use in more ways than just banquet hall. But I, I think ultimately that's the owner's decision to rent out his space as banquet hall or, or otherwise. Uh, but yeah, we'd like to know. I mean, the owner's never talked to me in those terms. It's always been is a banquet facility and and uh, used for weddings. So that that, that subject hadn't come up. Is there, on the other side of the building, it looks to me like the building's tying together, which is uh, simple interwoven brick. I don't know what you'd put a spacer in between the new structure and the old structure. Hey, with an application, I'd like to see how the new and old are going to be tied in, especially on the other side where we don't have an elevation of. We'll, we'll, we'll certainly bring you drawings that will explain that. Because I, I can't tell from here. It looks like there's a patio, and I can't tell if that, if this, if the patio is enclosed within the entire structure or if there's actually access from the outside to that patio on the, I guess it would be the northern side of that patio. Um, it looks like it's an enclosed patio within the entire structure now. Right. Is that correct? It's correct. And that's all, and that's all a, uh, that's, a, a patio. Lower, that, that's a lower roof in that area. That's only, that's only a 14 foot high roof in, in order for us not to block any, we're not blocking any of the existing windows of, of the carriage house. And, and this is preserving that existing patio that's there out back now, correct? That's what you're using as a footprint it, that's, that? that's basically where there's a patio now. We talked about elevations from the limestone side and from the church, school side, I think. What, just for my information, what's going to happen to the carrot house itself functionally? What's going to happen to the carrot house itself functionally? Uh, functionally? People still use it? They will use it as, as banquet facilities and for meetings. And, uh, and uh, the, the area that you see on my drawing that's called uh, serving, where the food is served out of, yes. that, will, that will serve to the carrot house and to the, to the new addition. Both. Just as a general uh, observation here before uh, the board wraps up and, and we ask the staff to, to, to comment, um, I know that in your opening statements you've, uh, and um, certainly you have uh, gone to great lengths to reduce the, the footprint as much as uh, as as uh, yeah, we did as you, as you yeah. can, and um, I compliment you on uh, all your all all of your labors, and they're certainly evident uh, in what you've uh, presented to us over the course of but these. Let me point out one other thing. Uh, sure, because of the reduction in the square footage, this is one bay. Fantastic. Um, just sort of as a, a one of the, uh, you know, the, in the staff's findings and conceptual reviews, the items that they list aren't necessarily direct conflicts with a guideline or a set of guidelines. Okay. And uh, they're just sort of areas of concern that they want to bring to your attention. And Ms. Wiseman, I know you said you're close to the line where it's no longer a viable project. And I would just encourage you to, to, to push as close to that line as you can. I think that's one of the uh, uh, the concerns of the staff is the size, and that has been of concern to the uh, the neighbors that you've spoken with in the past. Well, and certainly, we've expressed those sorts of things to you as well. And I also want to reiterate that you know it's obvious you've gone to great lengths to minimize the impact of this addition to the site while still making it a viable project. And of course, the the devil's in the details. Um, but I want to compliment you on your labor so Thank far you. and also um, 
<laughs> encourage you to get as close to that. Well, that when we get into uh, detailed drawings, well, I'm not going to put one square foot more than than the owner needs sure. to, to do the business. And if we can find other ways to to reduce it in some some areas, we'll we'll make every attempt to do that. That, thank you very much for your for your candor there, um, does, Mr. Billings, Mr. Hosfield. Do you have anything else? In the, it, this doesn't have to be it. I'm just going to turn it over to staff uh, for some of their comments before we. I have um, just two final comments. The first is, um, and I, I think I said this earlier. If not, I just want to make sure I iterate it. Um, this is um, not that my opinion matters any more than anybody else's. It's just that I happen to have a vote here. <laughs> it, it does. <laughs> and, so, and so you need to hear my opinion to, to, to come back. Um, but I think that what this is coming into is great. Um, I mean, it's, it's taking the elements we talked about before. It's changing the location of the structure. I hope it's it's meeting the owner's needs because that's obviously what, I mean, it's not really a guideline issue, because, but it, it's certainly a, an element that's necessary to do a project at this scale. Um, I, I, I'm not an architect, I'm not an engineer, um, I'm an attorney, and so I'm sort of a rules type person. Um, so I don't always understand or know how to explain perhaps technical terms that some of my fellow board members understand a whole lot better than I do. Yeah. But if, if it helps, I'm, I'm married to an attorney. So. <laughs> well, my wife can empathize with you. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I don't know how to describe this. There's still an element of. Um, Harshness with the um, with the straight lines of the brick that um, that I think in the entrance way with the round columns helps soften and I don't know if there's a way to do that on the remaining whether they would be the faux brick columns that are there and maybe rounding those out or looking at something on the roof line to soften it out that would be my, my last concern is that when I look at this I see it's a box of bricks with some some glass windows. And I, that's not to say I think the structure is bad or it's it's not within the guidelines. I think it's very close. I'm giving you my interpretation saying the guidelines. If I look at this, I think there's a way to to soften that harshness with some architectural details that would complement the historic nature of the Carrick House and add value when you drive by this by this on Third Street. People and they turn the corner and see Carrick House, they will know, oh yeah, this is the Carrick House addition, not the Carrick House is a historic addition to this new yeah. structure. Well, you, you know, if you'll, if you'll, if you'll, will, just this is my advice to, I, to you as, as an architect. I, if you will go and look at the Carrick House, you will see many features of the Carrick House that, that, that I've incorporated here subtly. But the, the Carrick House is really a, a strikingly straight it's line a box. house also. It's a box with a, with a porch on the it's, front and one bay, bay on the side. I mean, right. it's... But you know, on, on the on the end wing back but, here, we uh, we have this the stair stepped brick going back to the glass, very similar to the Carrick House, and um, and and the you were talking about the columns earlier on the Carrick House. The columns on the Carrick House are, are columns that I've never really seen before. They're hugely round and they're straight, and they ha and they have no base, nor nor do they have any, nor do they have a capital. So well, it, but there are a lot of architectural details that the Carrick House has that soften the stru this what the scale of that structure that I think could also soften the scale because I mean this is a this is a huge addition. Um, well, and I, I, I hear don't take those saying. comments to say I hear what you're saying, and 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 as we get into the next phase of this design, I, yeah. I will I will I will look at that very heavily and, and to I, see if we can do something to. Uh, I tend to agree to an extent. Uh, there are a lot of broad brick surfaces here in the addition, and I'm looking at the, you know, the image here of the Carrick House on the front. And right, you know, I I don't in any way think it's appropriate to put shutters or the the, the other dental work that's across the front, but it's those elements that break up the broad surfaces of the Carrick House on the front facade and I'm wondering and it, for your consideration if you wouldn't consider in the broad planes uh, for instance in this area in these these types of broad planes of maybe not in the stone I'd leave that alone but in these areas where there are broad planes of brick if there's not a chance to recess 
shape of brick into that surface to break up the we can do that surface we can do that very simple um, i'm sure you're familiar um, with i designed details. the uh, history center in uh, in frankfurt mm -hmm. and um and we we did a lot of that on that building of doing doing things with brick patterns and uh, and and recessed panels stone panels and brick panels so it and it's it's a typical thing i've i've been part of many designs sure. that included that as well and i'm sure you're familiar with the detail but for your consideration, I would look at that just to help break up the surfaces a bit. I wouldn't take it too far because you, know, you don't want to make it look older than it is. I think we're just talking that there's just, if you look at the front of the care cast, there's just a lot, there's a lot of detail going on there and that you don't have to re repeat all that detail, but it would help soften the box of brick and glass that are on the back. Um, yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying. That's my, I, that's my sort of thoughts. We can sure do that. I mean, like, for example, I mean, I think that, that the, the – and this is one of the things that on those I, – I, I don't know what you call these two side wings to the main entrance, but you know, they sort of have those, those faux brick columns in between the windows that echo what's on the front of the house already. Um, but if you look in the front between the windows, my recollection is there's small – on the fr first floor, there's small brick columns that have um, corners at the top that are actually um, oblong – was it trapezoidal? Is that the right shape? A rectangle with the sides cut off? Yes. <laughs> that, I think it's a trapezoid. That is indeed a trapezoid. <laughs> yeah. um, that's my recollection of the, and so maybe that's a way to do some of this stuff anyway. That's Yeah, I, I tried to get the front, a, where the front entrance is, to, it's, in, in, a, in some way to, to mock the yeah. carry house as far as the, the entrance setting out and the two wings re being recessed. And, one final question is, um, understanding Lexington's ban on smoking indoors, is there an accommodation being made for outdoor smokers that you all want to incorporate in the design as an outside element that would be there? You know, functionally, I don't smoke, and so I, I don't either. it's not for me. Um, but it is something that I know is an issue with, with more and more event spaces that they need, that people do want to smoke and they want somewhere to go. And um, the... Uh, one of the unfortunate results is people end up standing right by the front doors and smoking and pitching their butts down, and that's not fun for anybody. Um, just some, if there's a way to incorporate that. Just These are my thoughts for you all to sort of take back, reflect on, do whatever you need sure. to. Um, on that, I don't have anything else. Mr. Spellings, Mr. Hossfield? Again, this isn't the this isn't last call. Right. Uh, I, I'd just about run out of things to say, really. Um, you know, your elevation drawings include the carrot house, and I know that 3D rendering is a is an expense, uh, something that might have helped a little bit, and just if this can somehow be incorporated into your final presentation for certificate is include so we can get context of the addition to the original structure. Okay. Now let's see both of them together so we understand well, we, how we they will, go we'll together. We'll do that. I, I think that would help because yeah. I, I feel like it does a pretty good job of relating. So if we can see how it relates in your model, or uh, you know, a little more drawings, that'll help convince us that you've made the appropriate effort. To I, I, I think you'll I think you'll be pleased with forth. the way we present it. So because of course we're going to need to see all four elevations of the addition, but we'll have all those to you'll, help you'll us have establish context. <laughs> Uh, we'd like to see the original house as well, so we can understand how it relates scale-wise, how we can see the rhythms, if there are any that move across both structures, and all the other pieces you want to make It'll sure we notice. Uh, we'll need to sit yes. somewhere. E even down to the roof plan? I uh, Yes, that would help. Okay. S staff? Well, the staff continues to have many of the same concerns we've had from the get-go. <laughs> In that, it is a very large, large addition. And relative to the guidelines, uh, the uh, footprint and the square footage, while the square footage in the historic house is accomplished on two floors and is 8,800 or whatever range right there, the square footage of the new addition is right around 9,000. Yes, yeah, so we're about 1,000 feet larger than, right. than the square footage. I think the problem is, um, and I'm not suggesting you stack half of it on top of the other one, don't get me wrong, <laughs> uh, but I think from the staff's interpretation of the guidelines that the uh, 
essentially you're putting double the square footage as an addition um, behind and adjacent to this house. We have shared that, I know, with you all from the start, and that continues to be, uh, you know, the, the literal elephant in the room in terms of, of um, getting there. We've uh, enjoyed very much the fact that you have worked with us a lot about how to articulate these elevations should it be deemed that it's appropriate to build something of this magnitude, and we appreciate that. Um, but to be just very forthright, I think the staff would not be in a position to, to recommend approval of something of this magnitude as an addition on the back of the house. Um, once you have to make that call, then how you articulate it becomes not exactly moot, but uh, a little bit problematic to then to, to then uh, facilitating the fine tunings when you have that basic problem. Um, having said that, I would comment about some of the the fine tunings because I do think you all have made very good effort to take what your programmatic needs are from your client's perspective and and do the best you can to accommodate that um, and. Have it be lower than the roof line of the main historic and all those things. And you've really worked very hard on that. Uh, the, the only thing I'd say relative to you, what are the changes from the last meeting, uh, from the difference in these drawings and in your uh, dimensionals, on the elevation toward 3rd Street, the top elevation, the top one there, it is the glass with the columns breaking the bays like that. In, a, in an ironic sense, I think has changed the ratio of the solids to the uh, to the glass to the point that it may not relate quite as it did in your drawings version to the historic mass. Um, it is not that it isn't uh, possible to take that approach, but I think your drawn uh, elevation of that. Um, before you stayed up a couple of nights trying to accomplish the the other with more glass and more verticality, in some ways um, carried through the line of historic house, the plane of that on over. And you see it to the left of the tree, if you're looking at this, um, in that, that that concept is still there. And you've changed it on, on the right-hand base. So um, when you see it, Drawn as we have had it uh, in this version, I think right. that the uh, ratio of the solids to the voids is more successful relative to the historic mass. If you were looking this at this as a freestanding, totally new build, not connected to or party to a historic house, I'd say it's an either or choice. I think it's a successful design, but does it relate as closely to the historic building? as your, pre your previous plan, uh, that el one elevation particularly, I would suggest maybe not. But uh, as I say, if you were looking at them without, other, with the con without the considerations of the historic uh, structure adjacency within the guidelines for just a new building within the setting of a historic area, I'd say it would be optional either way. Well, and that's one reason why I, I, I chose to keep the... Yes. The, the two uh, wings, each side of the entrance, the way they are, because the further away that yeah. I, fe I felt, the further away you got, the the, the the less impact the historical structure had on on the on the building. And I wouldn't negate that thought. Uh, I don't disagree with it. Um, I think there's just a little more continuity, perhaps, comes with the other. Your rear elevation, that is the lower right corner. Um, has that same concept repeated, you know, on the back, and I right. think it's more successful. I guess. Yeah, I as you go around the corner, the, 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 this this really complements the rear elevation. Right. Right. More. So um, anyway, but I, I think the uh, level of detail you have and so forth. I, I'd be a little cautious. You know, I'm not disagreeing with the board per se, but I'd be a little cautious of trying to add too many elements back to this because I think one of the things that um, makes this clean lined and, and able to read as a new building yet you know scaled and trying to reflect about the old is its lack of detail uh, without but you've got nice nuances you know your bricks so to let me explain something that, that, that we came to this, this solid band is 
Uh -huh. At one time, I had these tunnels coming on through with little, little brick piers that were only two to three inches deep. Mm -hmm. But it, it just, to me, it, is, it felt like it got very worky. You know, and, and, then I, I took, and then I went back and looked at the Carrick House, and the Carrick House has that smooth, yeah. flat facade. No, so I, so uh, my sense would be that um, uh, as far as it, it being streamlined and having a uh, reflection of the inspiration of the historic and so forth, that maybe stopping where you are as far as any detailing <laughs> out might be an appropriate thing. Now, the recessed panel idea talking about break some of those horizontals would not necessarily skew that possibility. Uh, I've pretty much regretted that ever since I said it, though. Uh, <laughs> I, I go back and forth, try it out, and if it looks good, great. But if not, don't, don't do it on my behalf. I, I do think less is more in this instance. <laughs> but anyway. Um, I know that guy. <laughs> we, we, uh, so, as I say, that the staff's concerns, as you know, we're charged with with sort of getting over that initial hurdle of is the the main concept and main um, element that are, that is to be built within the guidelines, and then how do you articulate it? And we're having trouble with that first hurdle. There's there's just no question of that. Um, as the board has mentioned, we will, of course, for the full review, need uh, the elevations and so forth as you've agreed you're going to provide. So that's it. I, I, I would come up with um, I appreciate your comment too about less is more. And, I, and in case I wasn't clear, I don't think there has to be a lot done with what I'm talking about. I think that there's just, if you look at the, the, the porch and the columns on the front, there's a bit more detail than what this structure offers that can soften all of the brick and stone and glass that will, that I, th that I, I agree completely with Ms. Kerr, that it's not, it's not a lot issue. It is a small detail issue. Um, that is one of these things that you sort of know it when you see it, but you don't know how to describe it. I think I have a couple of things already in mind that I think I think you I think you will like. I'd like to speak to uh, Ms. Kerr's comments concerning the double high uh, glazing to the right that we discussed earlier, where the brick was taken out. Uh, I don't know if there's not another way to reinforce. You know, the mullions, the two horizontal mullions in the middle there. Yes. Do you draw a reference all the way across? And I think that's the beginning of a, you know, that's a nice reference all the way across. I like the double high glass, but I wonder if that idea, if it's not reinforced with thicker mullions at that location or a different material between the mullions instead of glazing across there. Something to think about and consider. I, I like that it's double high. If it's going to be a double high space, I like that it looks like a double high space on the outside. Yeah. The, the owner liked it being evident that the, that the ceiling height was what it is. Please go ahead. I just want to make one. I know this is very late now, but I want to respond to the elephant that Betty raised uh, because that is the, I know, the issue the staff has struggled with. But just so... I think it's clear that if if this project was, is limited to the footprint, not the size of the Carrick House, it won't work. I mean, if you if you just look at the size of the banquet hall, which is where you can't accommodate that those people in the Carrick House without gutting the rooms, and we don't want to do that. You also can't uh, do the other things that you have to have. We're trying to both, we're trying to balance maintaining the integrity of the house and make, giving it this use as a banquet facility, which everybody, at least the people that have used it, agree is a good use of the house. So um, that's ultimately an issue for the board, but in terms of where the line is, it, it, would, it would not be possible for this to work if the constraint was the footprint of the parent house. We think that there's leeway within the guidelines to allow that, to allow something of this size. But I, I did want to say that now because if that's, if that's going to be the, you know, make or break, I just want to let you know the owner's position on this is that it just won't work. It's, there's just not enough room if, if you limit 
to that footprint. And, and I can tell you, I have, I have squeezed everything at this stage. I have squeezed everything out of it that we can squeeze out of it and still accomplish the program. All right. I think there's an issue too there where function. I mean, if this were a house people lived in and then they proposed an addition this much larger than the house, that's pretty, that one's pretty easy in my mind. That's cut and dry. And I think here where the function is to host a large number of people and then the function of the new addition is to host an even larger number of people. In my mind, that brings up new questions of should an addition this size is that an exception to the guidelines? And I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of great. So it's certainly something I have to think about. I, I guess one, one way that you can look at it is that there is the third street elevation. And if I took square footage off, if I took square footage off and I took it off in the width of the building, you've still got the third street elevation. If the building went from 80 feet wide to 62 feet wide, you've still got the third street elevation. And what's on the other side, it's sort of like a movie theater cowboy scene. You've got the downtown, but nothing's behind the billboards. And here, people don't know how much is behind the third street elevation. Anyone else have any comments or questions? Yeah, please go ahead. Regarding the size, I think that's been one of the issues. I mean, from the beginning, I mean, it's, it's definitely been, I think everyone recognizes that's one of the big issues. And um, I mean, I, I remember, and I even have my notes still here, that, um, you know, that additions should be secondary in size to the main structure. And that's not a shall, that, that there is a permissive nature of that under the guidelines. Uh, I think otherwise we wouldn't even be this far along in the process. Um, so. Uh, I, I, I mean, I think everybody agrees that's definitely been an issue from day one, and that's, that if that was not permissive and it was mandatory, that there would be no discussion at all to either last month or this month. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, very much again. Uh, and do you have any additional questions for us? No. Okay. Appreciate well, all the time you put in. Thank you, and uh, thank you also to the staff for. Uh, okay. Would for, you like? For would you all need, like to keep the, the renderings or? Uh, we'll need one for the rec for the for staff. We need to keep one okay. for the for the record. Uh, but I know how expensive these are to produce. And yeah, if you can, <laughs> yeah, if you, if you can use them, please, please. And if you want to bring them back so that you don't have to print them again, that's fine too. I mean, they need to be updated. Don't bring them back. Yeah, don't need to. Um, I believe that we don't have any additional business this evening, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, at the last meeting, you had um, asked me to form a task committee to uh, pursue the um, issue of whether conceptual reviews are permitted by the bylaws. The committee has not had an opportunity to meet yet, and I'll continue to report back to you on the status of that. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Billings. I had neglected to note that uh, in my notes for this evening. I apologize to you for that uh, omission, and uh, thank you for the update. We'll, we'll check back in with you. Um, but certainly... I move we adjourn. Thank you. Is there a second of the motion? Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you all again very much.